Hi folks, welcome to this installment of videos. I'm Joe V from 4x5 Photography and we're going to be talking about all the steps that you need to know to get started with large format photography. Everything from loading film to getting that final image. In this series of videos the goal is to cover all of those potential failure points so that as you start working with large format or if you've already started and you're having issues with the process, your prints or your images aren't turning out the way you want them to, uh, you've got some ideas on how to troubleshoot that. So this is video one and we're going to start right off with how to load and handle film and begin the process. So thanks for watching and let's get right into it. So first let's talk a little bit about the film holder. This is a 4x5 film holder. It is specific to and built only to hold a 4x5 sheet of film, 4 inches by 5 inches. This is an actual piece of film that we'll be loading into it as an example. Uh, a film holder has two sides, so you get two loaded sheets of film in here and two images uh, that you will then develop. It's made up of the film holder body and then a black slide that covers the film once we've loaded it. Uh, to make sure that it stays in a light-free uh, container until we're ready to expose. Now, uh, the important thing to realize here is that right off the bat in step one here, we have the potential uh, to introduce our first failure point. And when I say failure point, when I'm talking about uh, our uh, elements or processes or mistakes that we can make that will introduce something that we won't identify until later on the, down, down the line that, that uh, either impact or destroy our image. Uh, and one of those uh, potential impacts is dust. So if dust gets into this film holder while we've got film in there, or if dust ends up on the surface of our film, uh, we're basically going to have a challenge when we get to development and then printing where we've got spots or uh, defects in our final image that we don't want to have. So really step one, we've got to look at eliminating that first failure point. To do that, it's a very simple process. We're going to use a common household vacuum and we're going to use it to vacuum carefully the dust from our film bat, both sides, and our black slides so that this is as dust free as possible before we load our film into it. So let's go ahead and do that with this film back. Okay, now you'll notice when I vacuumed, I didn't set the film back down when I picked up the black slides to, uh, to vacuum those. And again, I just don't want to put this in, on any surface or anywhere where it'll introduce it to more dust. In fact, now, even before I load the film, the final step here in preparing your film back is to get it into some kind of dust-free or dust-limiting container. Here I'm using a Ziploc bag, so I will go through now and take all of the film holders that I'm ready to load with my 4x5 film. I'll vacuum them, vacuum them in the manner that I just showed you and then load them into uh, their individual zip ties and, and basically get them ready for step 2A or 1A which is loading the film. So before we talk about loading our film holder, let's talk a little bit about 4x5 film and how it's packaged. Now depending on the type of film you buy, uh, some of the uh, lower cost films will be packaged a little differently. Uh, this example I'm going to show you is obviously Ilford 4x5 film. This is a 25 sheet box uh, and it is packaged the way most film uh, you will purchase is packaged. And that packaging is basically the use of a triple box. A triple box uh, to ensure that the film remains uh, in the dark now, what I don't show you here, even though you see a piece of film here, this is exposed film, is that the film, all 25 sheets in the case of, of uh, this box, would be in a black, light, tight envelope. Uh, and you would basically, once you open this box in total darkness, you would open the envelope up to be able to reach in and grab a sheet of 4x5 film for loading into your film back. 
So in the dark, what you're going to do is you're going to have to open this box and position your film so that it's ready uh, for uh, extraction and then loading into your film back. Now what I'll do to, uh, again, avoid some of the confusion that you get in the dark is I will take my recently vacuumed and dust-free uh, film holders out so that they're readily available and I will get them ready for film loading by opening up uh, one side to start with of the black slide about a quarter of the uh, of the amount that it opens and what you'll see in here is that you've got two slides one is for the film two grooves here and one is for the uh, the black slide and so by leaving the black slide in here you're kind of assured in the dark of not inserting the film into the wrong groove because it won't go past the black slide that's why you don't want to load it by opening up this whole slide plus if you don't load the film correctly when you put the black slide in it can mar the surface of your film, uh, which you won't know until you get the film out and develop it. So in the dark I will get all of my black slides ready. I'll uh, put them on top of each other so they're ready to go. And then I will open up the box of film in the dark, uh, all three boxes, position the film so that it's ready for loading, and then I'll pull a sheet of film out. Now uh, when I pull the film out, the most important thing, obviously, is that the emulsion side, the side that's uh, capable of capturing the image, is what faces out so that uh, when I expose the film, it can capture an image. And what you'll see on every sheet of large format film, or basically every, every sheet film that you can buy, is that there are grooves that sit here uh, in the upper, uh, in one of the sides of the, of the shorter end of the film. And so uh, what that tells me is which side of this film has the emulsion on it. And it's not that side, and I know that because I can feel these grooves. And by placing them in my right hand, touching them with my right finger, and putting the grooves on the right as opposed to the left, I know that this is the side that has the emulsion that needs to face out in my film holder. And so in the dark, I'll take my film holder and I'll get it ready. I'll open up this flap because that allows me to put the film in. I'll reach into the black envelope, pull out a sheet of film. Uh, if you've set the envelope up, if you've opened it up just the way that it's packaged, you'll pretty much always find that the grooves are already positioned to be on the right. I'll check to make sure they're on the right. I'll do my best not to get too many fingertips on the front of this film. Okay, I can put them on the back because that's not the emulsion side, but I want to avoid uh, as much as possible of getting any oils from my hands or dirt from my hands. Uh, it's always a good idea to thoroughly wash your hands before you do this. Again, uh, protecting your film for the simple fact that any problems that you create at this point you're not going to know about till you're well into the process. And then in the dark I will slip my film into the holder, close the flap, push my black slide in, Turn it over, get it ready for the next one, pull the film out, and repeat that. The minute that I'm done with this, if I'm adept at working in the dark, I can put this back into my uh, Ziploc bag or whatever I'm using as a uh, airtight or dust tight container, or I could put it to the side and then load it back into those after uh, after I've, I've completed and loaded all of my uh, film back holders. Now, I did mention that film comes packaged. Uh, another way, uh, in some cases, if you're buying less expensive film, you will find that it's not triple boxed, it's only double boxed. So you'll open the double box up in the dark, it'll have the same black uh, light-free envelope that the film will be in, and then the process is exactly the same. So that's what we need to do in the dark. Now most people, you know, most people have a dark room and they don't realize it. It's basically any interior room. And if you wait till evening when it's dark out so that there are no, there's no light coming through adjacent windows, shut off all your lights in the house, go into your you know, interior bathroom or closet, shut the door, then you've got what is basically a, a light-free room to be able to do this. And I would suggest when you're getting started, practice. Um, practice uh, by taking a sheet of paper, cutting it into four and a half by five inches, going into your dark room or closing your eyes and loading it in. I think you'll find after you load this two or three times that it's a very simple process. 
and that's something that's uh, easy to get used to and uh, you'll find that you become quickly adept at it in the dark. That's step one. So that's step one, loading and handling film. At this point you've got a properly prepared film holder. You're ready to take your, your large format camera out into the field, focus on the image that you want and capture a sharp large format negative. We'll be covering that topic in video two. I hope you'll watch it. We'll be discussing the camera, how you set it up, the major components of the camera, and uh, how you properly prepare to, uh, to capture the image that you're looking for to properly expose your film. That's video two. I hope you'll watch.